Well, good morning, and want to welcome you to City with Foundations and City Global, a time of the generation that we are living in. And we are doing a series entitled Engaging This Generation. It's a transformation generation. And we're going to look at the generation that Jesus identified, how he characterized them. And we're going to learn the context in which he placed the children of this world as against children of light. And it's just really exhilarating that we are going to just treat with this topic from a generational uh, basis. But we also want to invite you to our ministry, our devotions, that takes place at 5 a.m. from Monday to Friday. And also Wednesday, we have our prayer meeting online at 6 p.m. And you can reach us on Facebook uh, at City with Foundations Church. So let's go right now to engaging this generation in Jesus' mighty name. As I just said, our vision as a church is to raise up a people unto God Corrected according to the great commission of Christ within the hope of his calling. What is the hope of Jesus' calling? The hope of his calling is that many come to salvation. Many come to salvation. Hallelujah. And, and, and what, when we get born again and when we go to the world and we preach the gospel, we are fulfilling the hope of his calling Jesus was called by the father sent by the father to die hallelujah for sinners and to bring them to himself because he said if I be lifted up if I be crucified if I be lifted up from the world I will draw all men on to me that is the hope the hope of Jesus' calling is and that word calling is invitation the word calling means invitation so it really talked about the hope of his invitation he has extended an invitation to the children of this world to come to the cross to come hallelujah to Jesus Christ to come back to the father so when we preach the gospel when we go to India when we go to Pakistan when we go to Israel we are fulfilling literally fulfilling the hope of his calling you are a part of God's will and what we have done is that God has allowed us Pastor Alicia and I to establish a platform for you the children of God to be a part of the will of God to be a part of a fellowship and so the question is how is a generation identified a generation is identified by how they are characterized a generation is identified by how they are characterized and i am not talking about what how the world characterizes itself and how the world characterizes the church i'm talking about how jesus christ the son of god characterizes the generation of the children of this world and the generation of the children of light i go with every word that proceeded forth from the mouth of jesus christ for man shall not live by bread alone but by every not 99 percent but by every word that coming forth by the mouth of god so i'm not living by the rumors i'm not living by the propagandas i'm not living by these lies that they are putting forth in the world whether these uh, theories are true or not it is still a lie because god is the only truth that exists He said, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. And God has it covered because he said, I will shorten the days for the elect's sake. Shortening the days don't mean he will shorten it down to 345 days a year. That word shortened 
means to curtail the things that are being implemented on earth that God does not accept because it has the potential to destroy the world, has the potential to to, to, to silence the church and the gospel. So what Jesus said, I will shorten the days. I will curtail what men are bringing upon the earth in these days. Mm, you're not hearing me. I, I am watching. I am managing. Hallelujah. I am Jesus Christ. He said, the custodian of God for this world. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And everyone that lives in it. Hallelujah. He has not relinquished his authority. He is still on the throne. Hallelujah. And no matter what they say, but the virus is going to kill people in two years. Jesus said, I will curtail that. I will shorten that. I will come against that. I will come to it. I will abort it for the elect's sake whoa i'm getting excited i really wanted to come very calm and teach hallelujah i love jesus because it tells me that the greatest power that exists on the earth is the gospel of jesus christ as far as i'm concerned the kingdom of god is the superpower Praise the name of the Lord. A generation is identified by how they are characterized. And character takes time to mature. Character takes time to evolve. And what characterizes a generation is or are their works, their fruit, what they produce. I'm going to say it again. A generation is identified by how they are characterized. And what characterizes a generation are their, are their works, their deeds, their fruits, what they produce. So though being Jews, though being Jews, God's covenant people, here's how Jesus identified them as. Jesus said to them in Matthew 23 verse 33 Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Bear with me this morning This is a word from the Lord Amen Ye serpents He was speaking to Jews He was speaking to Abraham's descendants He said to them And it's a possibility that they, they were God's people through Abraham but they created a generation that was inconsistent with being God's people are you hearing me? they created a generation within the covenant Ooh. It, they, were, they were an illegal generation trying to function underneath a legal covenant that God made with Abraham how is that possible and is it possible for the kingdom people today is it possible for kingdom children of light to create a generation within the context of the church and the kingdom that is inconsistent with the kingdom of God Listen to this. Jesus said to them, he identified God's people, a covenant people with an authentic covenant. A legitimate covenant that he made with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob for an everlasting covenant. So they were operating within the context of an everlasting covenant, but created a generation that Jesus identified them as a generation of vipers. He said, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Every generation has a destination. Write that down. Every generation has a destination. I asked you earlier on, what generation, whose generation do you city? belong to 
whose generation you belong to what generation you belong to and there are only two generations that Jesus identified that of the children of this world and that of the children of light whose generation do you belong to you are not a baby boomer you are not a millennial this is all distractions by by the by the wisdom of this world or the foolishness of this world every generation has a destination and what Jesus was doing this was a characterization or a description uh, secondly he said you are a faithless and perverse generation as in Matthew 9 19 he also identified them as an adulterous and sinful generation he said whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words he said you are an adulterous and sinful generation mark 8 38 whoso shall whosoever whosoever he, he is going uh how to put it um transgenerational so he's speaking to everybody whether you are claimed to be a child of light whether you claim you're a child of the world whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous in this adulterous and sinful generation when it comes to the generation that is of this world he called it an adulterous and sinful generation adulterous means that they are unfaithful sinful means they miss the mark they are fallen short of the glory of God they miss the target they miss the mark and Jesus identified this generation as adulterous and sinful they are unfaithful to God and they miss the mark they are faithless and perverse this is important so he said whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels